In this lesson, we're going to examine a technique that can occasionally save you some time when multiplying two numbers in your head. The technique is based on the following property. Notice that if we multiply a times b, this product will be equal to the product of 2a times 1 half b. These two values are equal since the 2 and the 1 half here multiply to get 1, which makes the right hand side equal to a times b. Now this tells us something important. It tells us that if we are multiplying two numbers, then the product of those two numbers will be the same as the product we get if we double one number and have the other number and multiply them together. For example, rather than multiply 4 times 18 in our head, we can transform the 4 and 18 into more manageable numbers by first taking the 4 and doubling it, and then taking the 18 and halving it. When we do this, we get the product 8 times 9, which equals 72. Now this technique works especially well when one of the numbers ends in 5, because numbers that end in 5 turn into nicer numbers when we double them. Now since we doubled one number here, we must have the other number, and at this point we can see that we have a much easier product to calculate in our heads. Alright, now try calculating this one. Well here we'll double the second number, since it ends in 5, and then we'll have the other number. From here we can apply the technique again by doubling 4.5 to get 9, and having 18 to get 9 as well. When we do this we get 9 times 9, which equals 81. Okay, now let's examine how this concept has been tested on the GMAT. For this question, one approach would be to evaluate all of this, and then try to find the square root of the result. That of course would be a lot of work. Now the great thing about almost all GMAT math questions is that they can typically be solved using more than one approach. So let's see if we can find another approach here. Well, we're dealing with a square root, so one observation we might make is that these two numbers are perfect squares, and it's easy to find the square roots of perfect squares. Unfortunately, these two numbers are not perfect squares. But if we notice that 18 is twice as large as 9, we might make the connection that we may be able to apply the technique we just learned. Let's find out. So we'll leave the first product as it is, and then we'll take the second product and first halve the 18 to get 9, and then double the 12 to get 24. Notice that we now have a 9 in both products. This is very useful since we can factor out the 9 to get the following. From here, 25 plus 24 equals 49, and we now have the square root of the product of two perfect squares. At this point, we can apply this rule and rewrite our square root as the product of two separate square roots. Finally, when we evaluate this, we get 21. So as you can see, the technique of finding a product by first doubling and halving has the potential to save you some time on the GMAT. So be sure to add this to your collection of test strategies.